Okay, so this is the second section about voltaic cells. We've just talked about and given a description about um, the salt bridge and the porous cup, two separate methods, two methods, I mean, of separating the half cells so that we can get a voltage difference. Okay, so moving on to this, this example. This is like the classic example, okay? Why? Because it's a copper zinc battery, which is quite normal to have because it gives us a good voltage difference because there aren't any real psi reactions happening and there aren't any, um, and the materials are quite cheap. So, uh, can I move that? Maybe. Okay, so here's your salt bridge and we're gonna, dis we're gonna, we're gonna dissect this and I believe the, uh, yeah. Okay, so here's your salt bridge, here's your beaker, there's your copper electrode. Here's your wire that goes through. You could hook that up to a voltmeter if you want. This is not calibrated, clearly. Oh, good gosh. Okay, sorry. So salt bridge, which uh, this one happens to be filled with sodium nitrate. Why do we pick sodium nitrate? Put it right away, Andy. Right away. Because it's a weak oxidizing agent and a weak reducing agent, and therefore they will be spectator ions for us. Okay? But I don't have to pick sodium nitrate. I could pick copper nitrate because I already have it, so it's not going to mess anything up. I could pick zinc nitrate. Mm, I already have it. It's not going to mess up. I could put sodium, uh, potassium nitrate. So this salt bridge can be any kind of salt, just not one that's going to play a part. I wouldn't want to pick acidified potassium permanganate because it's a strong oxidizing agent and then that, that would then be end, up, end up being our oxidizing agent. Okay, so zinc electrodes uh, and a copper electrode, the two beakers, the two solutions, this being colored um, blue, I don't know why it's green there, but blue, and um, some kind of salt bridge and two cotton plugs in the bottom of the salt bridge, which the girls have put in their salt bridge. So just like some cotton, balls that have been shoved up there, okay, to help filter. Okay, so scientists don't want to draw this every single time. I don't want to draw this every single time. So we condense this into what's called cell notation. So down here you can see cell notation. So I rewrite this saying copper is placed into the copper nitrate solution and the and then there's a there's a porous boundary whether that's a I don't know. <laughs> why can't I just talk and why can't I just use the board markers? It's just so much easier. Um, so this double line here, that one there, is uh why I'm not quite sure why it's not loving me today or any day for that matter. <laughs> Seriously? Okay. All right, so this double line thing right there indicates the porous boundary. Whether that's a salt bridge, whether that's the porous cup, it doesn't matter, okay? It just means that they have been separated. This is the other half cell here where you've got zinc nitrate and zinc in, in your half cell, okay? So uh, a single line separates the electrode from the electrolyte. And this single line does the same thing, okay? I don't always have to put the nitrate in because the nitrate spectator. So sometimes you'll see Cu solid, Cu two plus, double line, Zn two plus, line, Zn solid, okay? This is always the cathode half cell on the left. So if you're asked to give its notation, then you put the cathode on the left and you put the anode on the right. But I wouldn't trust that that's the way they've given it to you. So you always look at all four species and you go, okay, what's my strongest oxidizing agent? What's my strongest producing agent? What, how's it gonna go? Okay, but it should be cathode on the left, anode on the right. Or at least the, yes, and then the so there's the reduction half reaction on the right left and the oxidation half reaction on the right. So. 
A voltaic cell will produce electricity spontaneously within the two half cells. Why is there always a spontaneous reaction for voltaic cells? Yeah, but why? Why do, how do I already know the waterfall is going to go down? Why do I know before I even check the data booklet? One way or the other. No. Because it's joined. Because I have, I have both sides of the equation. So let's see if I can get this to write for me. Today. If I have copper solid and I have copper 2 plus and I have zinc 2 plus and I have zinc. Oh, a reaction will happen no matter what. And I look those up in my data booklet. I've got both sides. I've got both sides. So what I mean is look them up in your data booklet and you'll find copper, copper 2 plus zinc 2 plus zinc it doesn't actually matter like one will be on top of the other i don't know which one's on top of the other until i look i i agree with that but you know that the waterfall's going to go down whether it's that way or if the zinc is above because i have both things i've got all four things do you understand so it will be, so voltaic cells are always spontaneous. So like in that instance, you would say you didn't check anything and you just kind of set it up, it could be that the, like the cathode is on the left and the anode is on the right? Or would it, is it always? Oh yeah, like I could have swapped them around. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't necessarily mean that the cathode is on, yes, that is correct. You don't really know until you found the strongest, and then you can figure out which is your cathode. Yes. Evan? Um, so is that why you use like the same solution with the same metals? So right. That it can go either way? Right. That's why it's the same. Well, and in fact, I, once I knew I could replace the copper, once I knew that the cop in my, in this example here that we have on the table, once I knew that the copper wasn't the strongest, and then I know, and here's a new word for you, that it's, it's inert, non-reactive, I can replace it with anything that's inert, non-reactive, but conducts electricity, which is how I got the copper probe in here, copper stick, carbon stick, to replace the copper. That makes sense? So we'll look this back so we can get that copper just to see. Okay? So voltaic cells are always going to produce electricity. Okay, so let's just go back up here and let's have a look what's happening because the more often you do this, the more it hits home. But I shouldn't be saying anything new right now. Okay, so let's follow along. What is doing what? Where do we start? Good. Figure out what's your strongest of everything. So if I have... If I have copper, copper 2 plus, salt bridge, zinc 2 plus, and zinc, I'm going to go to my data booklet and I'm going to look up which is my strongest oxidizing agent, which is my strongest reducing agent. So what did you find out? Copper 2 plus is the strongest oxidizing agent. You okay with that? And so, what does that tell you then? That uh, zinc two plus is gonna lose. The okay, so strongest ox strongest reducing agent is what? Oxid Leo, Leo or Ger? Leo. Leo. So therefore, anode or cathode? Anode. Anode. You okay with that? And the copper two plus must be gaining electrons. And so, can I say this very clearly? It is happening at the cathode. Okay? 
A lot of students go, the copper 2 plus is the cathode. No, no, no. The cathode is the stick. So the cathode, this is happening at the cathode. But the cathode is the stick in there. In this case, the cathode is the copper. But actually, is that copper reacting at all? No. It's, it will remain unchanged throughout the experiment, correct? So I could actually take it out and replace it with something else, like graphite carbon. An inert, I-N-E-R-T, electrode. Non-reactive, but it conducts electricity. An inert conductor. So, I, so the copper is inert, the carbon would be inert, platinum is another good inert electrode. Okay? So all three of those things being inert, and I could put any of those three things as this stick here. What were they? Carbon, platinum, and... Uh, carbon, platinum, and I've got copper because it's a copper 2 plus solution. Copper is inert in this case. Okay. In the case on the table, it is also inert, but you did it a case before where it wasn't inert. Yeah. Could, would you just quickly check for me, please? The um, some products are not seeing anything yet. Can you just check if iron is indeed uh, a stronger reducing agent than copper? Like is copper two plus still my strong stock says you did in the example on the table that you guys set up for me. Strong stock says copper two plus. reduction at the cathode. Zinc 2 plus is actually also spectating. And it's the zinc that's losing electrons, oxidizing, and is the anode, and is happening at the anode. Both of those apply there. OK, so can you then, I would go down here, and I would label that this is then the anode. And I would go over here and label that this is the cathode. No, the zinc is being, mean? so the reaction, you uh, you said to me that that's the strongest reducing agent, because mm -hmm. you found that in your data booklet, <coughs> and if that's the strongest reducing agent, then the zinc must be coming zinc 2 plus and two electrons. Mm -hmm. And where is that happening? Here. It's not happening here or here no, or here or here. Electrons the it's happening here. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me the direction of the electrons, please? First of all, they are in the wire, in the wire, and they're going anode to cathode, so in this case they are going left. So one of the things you might see on an exam would be if I labeled an arrow, this first arrow going left, and a second arrow going right, and this is a numerical response question, and it said on the first blank, indicate the direction of the electrons, you would say number one, because number one's arrow is going in the correct direction. Does that make sense? So that's how they ask you these kind of questions. Because this makes a lovely written response question. It's quite hard to sort of fit into numerical or, or multiple choice, so that's how they do it. Okay, so um, 
what else then? So number one, the electrons are going this way. So here go the electrons this way. Can you write the reaction happening, the half reaction happening at the cathode? Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes to Cu. Now, here's my question for you. Can you write that without looking like you're down a booklet? No. Yes. Okay. You need to wean yourself off the data booklet and be able to do that on your own. Why? Faster. And it might not be in the data booklet. You're right. Sometimes I'll give you one that's not in the data booklet. Okay? So, um, what else can we identify? Can you identify the direction of the cations? Is it going in direction 3 or is it going in direction for the cations. Cations go to the cathode, everybody say that. Cations go to the cathode, and therefore the direction of the cathode is, Raj? What number, please? Three. Okay. And anions are going in which direction? Four. And um, what? Which is your inert electrode? Number six, or number seven, or number eight, or number nine? Eight and nine being the solution. Six. Which is your inert electrode? Six. Six. And so the numeric response. Answer for this would be one, three, four, six. Is is not is six two plus one? Did you not say that that was in the two or that it was a spectator? No, no, no. Uh, uh, see, okay. Electrode is the solid. Oh, okay. So which is your inert electrode? Okay. You better give me a solid answer. Yeah. So it's like I said, what's your inert electrode? Yeah, yeah. pun intended on that one. Pardon? <laughs> There's no such thing, but I could say which is your spectator ion. Can you can you list the spectator ions here? There are quite a few of them. Sodium ion, Na plus, L3 minus, and Zn2 plus are all spectator ions. So then would copper be formed? Yes. There? It would be formed in yes. the cathode. That's right. So here's a multiple choice question then. What difference would you see at this point? Okay. A, a color change. Uh, make that carbon. Make that uh, carbon. A, a color change from gray to bronze. I don't know what the color they call carbon in this, in this example. Uh, gray to metallic. B, a mass decrease. Or C or D, something else. <laughs> yeah, <the> first one. <laughs> Would there be a mass decrease or mass increase mass at this spot? Increase. 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 Why a mass increase? Because that's where the solid is forming. Best answer. So the copper, oh, it's written here. The copper is making copper. The copper 2 plus, I mean, is making copper solid. So this is going to end up with a buildup of copper solid. Do you care that? So that's a mass increase. And... Um, what color will it change? Well, if it was carbon before, it's gray. And if I'm adding copper color to it, it's going to end up with that shiny copper color. Right? Yeah. Which some exam boards call pink. Mm -hmm. um, I think brown is probably what they say. A shiny brown color. Okay, does that, do you get how to play with all that? 
So you have to do the whole story, and then you and you just start somewhere, and you piece your way around the puzzle. And it all should it all should add up together. Okay, so let's just see if there's anything else in this package I need to talk to you about. Um, oh yes, yeah, so I was going to tell you this little tidbit. If you're looking things up in your data booklet, and you know that your data booklet is, and you know that your data booklet has the strongest oxidizing agents up here, and your strongest reducing agents down there, with all these arrows in here, right? And these are reduction path reactions. That's the title at the top of the data booklet. And these are all like plus 2e plus 1e because they're all being reduced. So this is blank plus 2e gives you blank. Everybody okay with me? The one that you find up here for the strongest oxidizing agent will be your cathode because it's going to be the oxidizing agent, which means it's reduced because therefore it's the cathode. So whatever you find on the left-hand side will be the reaction of the cathode. Whatever you find down here will be the react reaction of the anode. Some students find that quite a bit easier. Just to go, whatever I find on the left is, is going to be the so reaction. So the strongest the oxidizing agent is always the cathode. Because mm -hmm. it's always the one that's being reduced and it's GERP. It all ties together. I haven't said anything new. I'm just saying, if you find it on the data booklet and it's on the left-hand side, and it's your strongest on the left-hand side, it's your cathode. It's like a shortcut to your thinking. I haven't said anything new. Okay? Because if it's an oxidizing agent, it must be reduced. If it's reduced, it must be happening at the cathode because it's GERC. Okay? And you know how last day we were writing our half reactions and then taking our voltage and adding them up mm -hmm. and we had to flip the voltage? Sometimes you have to do that. I'm not, sometimes you have to do that because if you're writing an oxidation number, you have to write the oxidation potential, which is flipped. But if I'm just, if I just have this cell notation like this, Here. And it's asked you, oh, I've got this written down, that's good. And it's asked you to write the half reactions like that, okay? If it's asked you to write the half reactions and write the voltage, I would. And this is being reduced. This is being reduced. Really? Come on. So this is your reduction potential as it is written in the data booklet, this one here. This is being oxidized. So this is the oxidation potential, or just the flip sign. In your data booklet, this will say negative 47. So we've written down positive 47 because we flipped it, because it's oxidation potential, not reduction potential. Are you okay with those words? And then you add them up. There you go, add them up. But if I don't have to write it all down and flip it and add it, it's just simply said, here's your cell notation. It's just simply said, here's your cell notation. Can you please tell me the voltage for it? It is so much easier if you know this little shortcut. And the shortcut is this, that the energy of the cell The energy of the cell is your cathode minus, that takes care of the flipping for you, so you don't have to worry about what's flipped, minus the anode. So if I look this up in my data booklet, and I look that up in my data booklet, and I subtract them, it gives me the voltage. Okay? And I know it's been quite a long lecture, so you're just about done but I'll just say one more thing. The cathode is at the top when you look them up. The anode is at the bottom when you look them up. So when you look up your values on the right-hand column of your data booklet, it's always the top minus the bottom, like in elementary school. 
where you had a top number minus a bottom number and you get the answer. Okay? So this cathode minus anode is the potential of the cell, is a quick little, uh, just writing them, flipping them. Okay? And we never multiply them anyway in voltage, so it doesn't matter. We're not down to that point. Okay, so, uh, this is what we're going to do. We've got 35 minutes left. I am going to say this to you. So in this package, I'm going to get you these textbook questions. We're going to cover all these questions that are these sheets that are next. But I'm going to say to you, those textbook questions are more practice. If you want more practice, there's some more practice for you on those textbook questions. Okay? However, we will skip down because we've got a half an hour left of class here. And we're going to start doing page 58. And I think that's, I wanted to finish this package today, but. I don't think we're going to. Yeah, I know, I can tell. Okay, so for today, you're going to do page 58, and then you're going to go back and do these textbook questions. So, so therefore, I won't teach anything else today, because I think you're full. Although those of you that are he were here yesterday, all of that was review, wasn't it, actually? Except for the cathode minus the anode. The more you review it, it all sort of feels a bit better to you. Okay, the less big it feels. All right, everybody okay? So page 58, or the, you know, this thing here, and then you're gonna come back and do these textbook questions.